Welcome to the Fan Counter Celebrity Podcast. My name's Nick. And I'm Elizabeth. And if you are listening to us in April, which you are, we are taping this in March. Full disclosure. Yeah, because we got a lot of spring break and Easter and stuff coming up, so we got to catch up ahead and get ahead. we got to get ahead, and we've got lots of things we wanted to talk about, so we're going to bring that to you on today's show. Yeah. Please, if you want to join the discussion, you can find us on Facebook. Just join the private group, Sharpie Nation, and join the conversation. We're also, uh, if you look up our big, humongous Facebook group, it's Fan Counters. Very easy to find on Facebook. But you can also email us at hello at fancounters.com. Okay, now that we got that garbage out of the way, um, how, how is, how's life going for you? We have it, It's like we've been taping some shows lately, but then we're off again and on again. So I got to make sure you're doing okay. I'm doing okay. Some weird things happened today, just today. Oh, my. So we are getting ready for spring break. Again, we're taping this in, in March. And um, I'm looking for an egg holder that you take camping so that I can put it in our fridge. I already have one, but I need a second one. So I've been running around to Goodwills in the area to see if I can find one. I have been unsuccessful. However, the last Goodwill I stopped at right before coming here to the studio, they stuck a little piece of paper in my bag. And so I looked at it. And as of March 30th, Goodwill will be selling items as is. (laughs) <laughs> so there will be no returning anything to Goodwill. So my wait, question: Wait, 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 wait. Goodwill takes returns. Well, I th- that that was my question. My so my question is: Are you getting so many returns that this needs to be the new policy? I have on occasion returned something that like just simply didn't work because you're supposed to be able to plug it in, and it works when you get home. That's that's the deal, right? Right. We've checked all these things. Right. And if you buy this electronic, it's going to work when you get home. And I have had at least one that did not. And sometimes in the past, I am just not willing to stand in the dressing room and try on all these clothes. And so I may have brought a couple of items home, then tried them on and went, oh, absolutely not. And, you know, if they were expensive enough, taking them back. Do you know what you could have done? Because Goodwill's receipts are so generic, you could have bought the Gucci jeans or something and then returned your Fleet Farm jeans. Well, no, actually, they're not anymore. They've got unique barcodes. Huh. Yes. I don't so, can tell how much I go into Goodwill. So that was that was my shocking thing. And then also what I found w- weird this morning was that m- my husband is in the midst of painting our house. Oh so gosh. before winter, my husband got one side... And the front done. So we now need to do the second side. Isn't this the one where he painted the outside of the house with a 198-year-old neighbor (laughs) and barely got anywhere because they were talking the whole time or something? Yes. And Uh he's only 81. Uh, But yes. So they're painting the house, right? So now we've got two sides left to go. Well, one of the sides has those like plastic sheds, right, that you buy at like Home Depot or things like that. Plastic like gardening sheds. How can you paint the outside of the house in winter? Oh, we're not painting right now. We're getting ready to paint. Didn't know that was a thing. So here's the process. Because these two sheds of giant plasticness need to be unloaded and moved in order for him to be able to paint one of the walls, the discussion is 10 years ago, before Lily was born, we had a bid to add on to our garage and make it two more cars big. And it was about $11,000 in 2009, okay? So 11 years ago. (laughs) And so we were about to do this, and then we got a phone call saying we were having a baby, and that money went to go pay for Lily. So we never got back to the project. So now Mark has decided that this summer we're going to pour a slab next to the garage to be able to park the RV on, and then we would like to at least have a discussion about putting that second two-car garage behind ours. We've got the plans, or at least like a basic outline, kind of from the guy who we had work it up in 2009. Yeah. So I call the contractor that we love that has put on our roof and our windows and our doors and our soffits and our fascias, and they had originally given me the name of a mason who put on my patio. And so I call that mason. Okay phone number disconnected Hmm. so then I call the contractor and say hey you know like three years ago you gave me this contractor or this mason to put on my 
uh, patio, I now need to put on a you know, driveway slab. What masons do you have for me? We have none. What do you mean we have none? Well, we have one that's gone into the wind like the one you're looking for. And we have two who are charging such high prices, we simply won't use them. So who do they use? Well, that's just it. So at the moment, she had no one to give me. So then I contact the gentleman who had given us the proposal in 2009. I send him an email. And generally, it's not super, super busy in Wisconsin in spring for contractors. You know, they're kind of planning and doing things like that. So I waited and waited and waited and got no response. So then I'm like, well, I have his phone number. I call disconnected. Also in the wind. It's not that unusual for contractors to go out of business. I understand that. But like I am now stuck with no one because then my husband is like, well, let's go back with the people who are general contractors who have done the roof and done this. And I go, but even if they build the garage, we're still back to the problem that they don't have a mason. So I still don't have a floor in my garage or a slab on the side of my house. And, you know, I've never used like Angie's List or Tackle or some of those websites that well, you better start i guess i'm going Jeez. to unless some of you out there have a mason in wisconsin that's willing to put oh in yes these i'm sure our big <laughs> listenership in boston <laughs> and san francisco can help you with that i need a mason i just i can't believe like how many fly by night i mean and obviously these are our contractors but look would you rather going? have this problem of not finding anybody or having somebody take half your money do a crap job and then you're out right and then what would you rather have oh yeah yeah yeah. i'd rather be Let's up find on the, the front. right person yeah, we'll find them but i just couldn't believe that you know just today alone i went through like five people we couldn't use that, that's kind of amazing because that doesn't seem like that that should be such a rare occupation yeah interesting huh all right can we talk about memes I think so. I'm not a thousand percent I understand the word other than Oliver keeps throwing these memes at me. Aren't they just little clips? No, it's a picture. They're pictures with words. Is that the stuff that you keep sending me when, when you no, answer no, me? No, no, no. Those are emojis. That's not I an have emoji. my face in an emoji. Yes, it is. Look at I, I sent her one that has my cartoon face and it says best news ever because she was in my driveway waiting for me to get home. Huh. Okay, so let's talk about memes. How this is that an emoji? I need to understand that. I thought an emoji was just a little small dot thing. Well, it can, it can be, like on your iPhone, and you have the little smiley faces and stuff and the little dog, but you can also have, well, that's, well, what I showed you was a, called a bitmoji. Oh. But same thing. Okay, I, this is way over my head. Okay. Keep going. We're on memes. Okay, give it Keep to up. me. Okay, so the coronavirus obviously is a Bad. situation. But isn't that funny that the corona, the beer, <laughs> is taking such a hit because people have sort of low IQ and they're like, I can't drink corona beer anymore. Right. I'm going to get sick. Is this the picture of the corona inside a refrigerator? Yeah. yeah. With and masks <laughs> on every other beer company other except for the corona one. Exactly. <laughs> yes, I did see that. Okay, that, so that one's one of my favorite memes of the, of the week. So that's what it is, just a picture? Is uh, what is what a meme is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got another one. And I know that we're on a podcast, so I'm going to describe it really well for you. You know that movie right now that's out, Call of the Wild? Yeah, I just saw it. Harrison Ford and... Um, it was really good. Some dog, right? Or a wolf? Or Buck. Is it a dog or... He's a dog. He's a dog. Okay. So uh, how was it, by the way? A plus? Or I mean, don't tell me about the whole thing because nobody cares. But is it good or not? Worth seeing or no? I think Yes. I judge a movie by if it actually makes me cry, it made me cry. Huh. Oliver was on the verge. Lily says not so much. Now, this is a remake of a movie, right? Like, Call of the Wild exists in, like, a 80s or 90s version, I think. I am unfamiliar with it. I actually did not have to read the book in high school. My husband was shocked. Oh, maybe it's just a that book. That I never read the book. I know that the author's last name is London, but I don't remember. Jack London. Is it Jack London? Yeah. I think so. Um, yeah, it's a very famous book that most high schoolers have to read, and somehow or another, like many things in my life, I've avoided doing it. And so I did not know anything about Call of the Wild. Oh, yeah, it's totally a remake. Um, they did a TV movie in 1997. There was an original film out in 1972. And it looks like they redid the film in 2007. So it's been done every like 10 to 20 years. Yeah. Um, I will tell you this. I saw an interview 
with Harrison Ford about it. Mm -hmm. And that I think even in 2007, you said was the last one. Yeah. Yeah. They wouldn't have had the CGI um, capabilities that we have now. And Buck is 100 percent CGI. And so I think that makes it a little bit different in the fact that they 100 percent controlled what the dog did as opposed to having an, a live dog. And there was an interview with the Cirque du Soleil guy who plays the dog and was there so that Harrison Ford wasn't just talking to himself okay. after they put him in. Plus, I believe the dog's movements are modeled after this gentleman who was obviously very flexible and able to stand in that <laughs> position for quite <laughs> right. some time, which is probably why the dog is so huge because the man, <laughs> you know, even on all fours is still quite you know, not small. Well, I w if you're fact-checking me, the 2007 Call of the Wild has nothing to do with a dog and a guy roaming the country. So the last time the movie was done was a TV movie in 97. The, the original is in 72. Okay, so we're getting off the meme topic. The reason I brought that movie up is because there is a picture online of Harrison Ford and this dog, and the caption says, when the drugs wear off and you realize you're not a space smuggler traveling across the universe with a Wookiee. Okay, so it, obviously that's just in a, reference to Star Wars. Right, so that's just a joke. So is that a meme when yes. there's words? Yes, because you just have to post that, and it creates instant recognition and, and awareness of what you're trying to get across as your point. Okay. What does meme mean? I don't know, because, you know, I, you know this is where my age shows, right? Because I thought originally it was called a meme <laughs> Okay. And my 15-year-old niece was quick to make a lot of fun of me. Okay. So Also not good English. Don't, a lot of fun of. A okay. lot of fun of me. <laughs> so. Yeah, because Oliver uses the word all the time, and he'll say, Mom, look at this meme. And I thought the meme was like the joke, like the picture well, the with, a the funny, pi yeah. with a funny saying. But then when you showed me the coronavirus one, there were no words. It was just masks just on all well, of the beer. So I thought maybe a meme was just a picture. But it can have words. It didn't need a description. Yeah, okay. We got it. Oh, this is my other favorite one. So there's a man staring with like blank eyes out in the nowhere and the wife with her like slapping her forehead. And the therapist says, your wife says you never buy her flowers. Is that true? And the guy says, to be honest, I never knew she sold flowers. It gets me every time. Love it. See, that's just dumb. <laughs> it's funny. No, just dumb. <laughs> okay. Do I have any more to share with you? I don't know if this is. Oh, yeah. This one. The coronavirus won't last long because it was made in China. Well, that's just mean. <laughs> Isn't that funny, though? No, that's just mean. Why is it mean? Because. Chinese products don't last. Come on. How much? How many times have you bought something and it just falls apart? We have lots of Chinese things that have lasted. <sighs> that is very stereotypical of you. Okay. The last one I want to play for you is something I found out online. I haven't listened to this yet, but you could check it out and email me if you figure out what it's talking about. Th look at this headline. It says, true crime podcast fan shocked to learn he was murdered 10 years ago in the latest episode. What? <laughs> Wrap your brain around that one. True crime podcast fan was shocked to learn he was murdered 10 years ago in latest episode. So it was a guy with the same name as him? I don't know, but I don't usually plug podcasts, but I will plug this one from Sugar Coated Murder. You should look this up. It's episode 10, Pecan Pie Muffins. I have no idea. So uh, that I've, I'm going to listen to it to find out. Maybe on a future episode I'll update you as to if this guy actually you know, was murdered or not because he's shocked to find that out. Well, I'm guessing it's just someone with the same name. Probably. Okay, then. Do you have Netflix? I do. Netflix has some amazing looking series on. So I, I went by my Netflix yesterday looking for a new show to watch. I've been watching the show Sinners. Have you seen that? No. It's got Jessica Biel in it. And it's about a woman who hears a song as she's out with her husband and son. And it triggers her to murder <gasps> the guy on the beach who's listening to it for no reason. Where are her husband and son? Right there watching. Watching her murder someone? Yes, she just she is peeling an apple for her son, and all of a sudden the song plays and she goes crazy and just stabs this guy to death. That's like the 
golden circle of the Kingsmen where they their cell phones send them. Like as soon as they hear that noise on their cell phone, they all start killing everybody. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to I'm going to put some titles by you to see if you've seen any of these shows that I <laughs> may be interested in checking out. You know what the answer is going to be, right people? Go ahead, hit All me. right. So, uh there's a show called The Society. No. Uh Unbelievable. No. Glitch. No. <laughs> this is going to be a no. The Haunting of the Hill House. Oh yeah, sure. Uh-huh. <laughs> no. How about The Five? The Five what? No. That's the name. The Trials of Gabriel Fernandez. No. You've not seen any of these shows. How about I Am Not Okay With This? No. Interesting. So those are the shows that I have pegged on Netflix to check out. And you've not seen any of them. What What are you watching on Netflix? The Fuller, Crown. Fuller House. I do like Fuller House. It's on its last leg. But um, I, um, The Crown, and I think we talked about it last. Isn't The Crown some British English thing yes mm, but we talked about it we it. talked about it last time that cnn is doing the windsors and that it very it's very similar to the netflix one obviously the netflix one is with actors and actresses um but it's been it's been very eye-opening to watch the crown and i did try but that's a fake show right it's not based on no oh, tr- it truth. is it is based on facts and truth oh. and so it's i i can't tell you exactly what's happening behind closed doors of the palace. So some things are not necessarily, you know, like I can't tell you that the dialogue actually said is real. But if you watch like the CNN one that's happening right now, and then you go back and watch the first episode or the first season of The Crown, you will find they talk about the same things, about King George the Fifth passing away, um, then King Edward abdicating the throne, and then King George the Albert was his real name, but then he became King George the Sixth. His daughter Elizabeth enough. Then went to the <laughs> ground. And it's so- just like me, you listening to me talk <laughs> about my favorite horror movie. So oh those gosh. are all facts that actually happened in England. And you know when Princess Margaret comes to the United States, in, I think some of the things that the Crown embellished may not have exactly happened that way but the gist of the trip is is there okay so, i have zero interest in that show right then. <laughs> good try though okay anything else good worth watching or no no you know i i was trying to figure out what it is i am watching i do find i am not a reality watcher yes we are i am We're not gonna talk about one in a minute i will tell you one that sucks me in the masked singer sucks oh. me in all the time. <laughs> Why? Because you sit there and you listen. And, you know, I don't know if you had done this when we were working at Country Radio, but lots of times I would come across new artists. Like we would get their CDs in. Mm-hmm. And so I would be listening to new artists. And I typically would um, very methodically put the, the CD in, sit in a very quiet room, close my eyes, and then listen to the new artist, and that would kind of help me determine whether or not... They were I, good or not. Yeah, like I was going to like that song or like that artist or like the writing or whatever it was. And so the masked singer allows everyone to do that because you can't see the singer. But like, for instance... Um, they're in ridiculous costumes, like a big cat. Yes, but they're in that so that you're paying attention to the cat... Not who they might be. Right. And one of the funny things is, is the one that won season two last year was Wayne Brady, who I absolutely love on Whose Line Is It Anyway? Because that man can sing just off the top of his head, you know, without even, you know, here's a topic and here's the music, go, and is, is a phenomenal singer. You know, and we had a guest who went to high school with Wayne Brady, right? Did we? Yeah. You don't know this? I don't remember. Uh, Ella Khaled. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, DJ Khaled's coming to Milwaukee this summer. I'm going to see if uh, if we can go get us a hookup or something. But anyway, like this se- this season that we're looking at right now, the section B of season three, there was a I think it was a cat or a mouse. It was a mouse. It was a mouse. And um, the second she opened her mouth, I knew exactly who it was. It was Dion Warwick. There was no way it was not Dion Warwick. Huh. And it's funny to listen to the panel justify. Their, who, why they who think they it think is. it is. And one of the people did actually get that it was Dion Warwick. And and then I'm like, seriously, people, how can you not hear that tone and know that voice? But there have been a couple of other ones that have really kind of shocked people. 
just because you're not 100% sure. Am I hearing that voice right? Like, I swear to God, one of the ones that's in group A is the rock. I will, I am holding out that one of the the ones that we haven't unmasked mm-hmm. yet in the first group is going is going to be Dwayne. Well, we probably know by now. We don't. Well, it's it's going to be April. I know, but they so, have Group A, Group B, and Group C. So we're only halfway through Group B right now. So by April time, we'll be in the middle of Group C. Oh, okay. And we will need those three to go up against the other, the three in A. Okay. So I just, I can't stop. Well, the reality show that you turned me on to, and you couldn't believe that I didn't know about this show. Well, it's just, it's like watching a train wreck. (laughs) I don't know how else to describe it. TLC has made a show called Welcome to Plathville. Yeah. And uh, I said to Elizabeth, is this about somebody in Plathville, Wisconsin? No. She's like, no, this is the name. This is like the family. Their last name is Plath. Yeah. So if you don't know about this show, you are following the lives of Barry and Kim Plath, and they have nine children. Uh Uh-huh. They have nine barefooted, homeschooled, hillbilly children, very protected in what I believe would be Georgia. Right. It's middle of nowhere, Georgia, Cairo, Georgia. Yeah. And um, now th- there's a lot of things that have come out about this family recently that you may not, you even you may not know. Well, uh, to be quite honest, I hooked you onto it and then I stopped watching it because I just couldn't take the oh, train wreck. It's great. Oh my gosh, these children. One of them wants to be like this really into sports, right? He's playing football and doing all this stuff and they're like, "Do you know who LeBron James is?" Oh yeah, and he he's has like no idea. No idea. Yeah. They don't watch any TV, they're not exposed to any pop culture of any kind. No. Oh, my goodness. It's a crazy show. One of them got married, and when he got married, his new wife introduced him to Coke for the first time. Coca-Cola? Yes, not cocaine. Coca-Cola and um, and alcohol. And now this 20-something, you know, just can't get enough because he's gone 20-something years without any of it. Let's talk about these parents, though, that don't allow the newly married son and his wife around the other children because yes. they're going to influence them in a bad way. Yes. Like they go to extreme lengths to yes. keep these two away. Like they have to ask permission to come over to hang out with their younger siblings. Yes. It's crazy. Because the mother is the main one who does not care for the wife because she introduced her son to Coke and introduced her son to alcohol and, you know, has this. I think they own a TV and she has a cell phone. And, you know, there's a lot of things. That this mom and she just can't come to terms with that, you know, and and from a mother's point of view, I do want to defend my kids. I do want to keep them, you know, sheltered as long as I possibly can. But having said that, the second oldest daughter Mm -hmm. um, went with the sister-in-law to, I feel like, California. San Francisco. Yeah, and of course they immediately. They're go, so conservative in go. Georgia, and San Francisco is so the opposite. Well, and the, she was seeing things that she had yeah, never seen, like they, homelessness and and uh, the gay, gay people community. And, oh, and oh. I mean, I'm sure her head was literally exploding. I watched her eat cotton candy for the first time. I thought she had just discovered crack. I mean, she was just <laughs> like, "No, this is fantastic." <laughs> and so, I mean, it's like, I, I, I mean, they. They hemmed and hawed about letting her go, and I'm sure they let her go merely for the television aspect of it. But think about this. First of all, how does TLC find these people? Second of all, if you're so conservative and so concerned about your children, why would you set up to go for a a reality show knowing how many other reality shows have, like, had their families completely ruined Mm -hmm. because of this? Let's talk about Mariah for a second. She's the one who went to San Francisco. She's 16. And with such a conservative family, everybody dresses very conservative, except Mariah. Who's shopping with this girl? How is she getting the short shorts and the 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 tiny tiny tank tops and all this? Like, it's so... I have no idea. I wouldn't let my kid go on television looking like that for sure. No. Holy cow. Yeah. Now, Elizabeth, you may not know this, but they have a connection to another TLC family. They have been known at least to pal around a little bit with the Duggar fan, the Duggar family, the Duggars, Duggars. the Duggars, nineteen kids and counting, nineteen kids and counting. Right. Actually, one of the shows that I do like, but it also has jumped the shark. 
And so after, oh my gosh, 19 kids and counting has been on for 10, at least 10 years because Lily, um, I was actually watching it when we got the phone call from the ad agent or from the adoption agency saying to me that, you know, the mom had come back and asked us to parent. And um, it's, it also has train wrecked the majority of their family. There are um, at least two children that cannot be seen on the program for various reasons. They're not all on there? No. Actually, 19 Kids and Counting doesn't really exist anymore because their oldest son, Josh... Well, now it's like counting on, right? Yes. Their oldest son, Josh, was um, accused of doing that dating site that was like hookers for married people or something like that. So he got caught in that scandal. <laughs> hookers it for also, married Well, yes, people. and it also came out that he had either molested or attempted to molest some of his sisters growing oh. up. And so he's like completely excommunicated. As he uh, should be. But he's still around because his wife is currently pregnant on counting on what? and so since that I but he's believe not on the show he's not on the show but his wife and his children is show he up a dugger or is he an in-law he's a dugger oh and then one of the daughters who i want to say is three down from the top jill um she got married i believe she has two children she um studied to be a midwife and they were in I don't. I can't tell you what foreign country she and her husband were in for quite some time, and then she had both of her children, I believe, in that foreign country. Um, but somehow or another, the husband has done something that has been behaving badly, and then either she was also behaving badly or whatever it was, she has vanished from the show. Although having been a midwife... I have seen glimpses of her when we're having babies. So I think she must be back in Arkansas and around the family somewhere, but she does not appear. Wait, aren't the Duggars in Utah? No, they're in Arkansas. Oh, see, I don't know a lot about that. Yeah. Show. I never and watched so, it. And so, and like six girls in that family just all had babies this year huh. or last year. All right. Well, let's go back to Plathville. Uh huh. So Mariah seems to be very comfortable on camera, right? Yeah. That's because she's already been in a movie. What the what? Yeah. She was in the 2018 short film called There, and you can find that film on Vimeo. She plays a troubled daughter who has a strained relationship with her father. So she's already a natural in front of the camera because of that. Now, we learned on the first season of Welcome to Plathville that the mother, Kim, accidentally killed her son. What? You didn't see this part? Obviously, I stopped watching before that happened. Yes. So the son was, uh, I don't want to get this wrong. I think he was, oh, 17 months. Yeah, I thought he was two. I was going to say two, but 17 months old. And he was playing in the yard. And Kim, the mother, was transplanting fruit trees. So she was moving a tree from one area of the property to another when she accidentally ran over her son <gasps> and killed him. Oh my God! How absolutely awful! Absolutely awful! It was. I don't even so know how you sad. live with that. No, so there is one uh, very tragic thing that happened, and that was revealed on this season of Welcome to Plathville. Mm, how awful! You know the son that got married, right? That's Ethan, I think. Yeah, that, to that photographer. He never stops smiling. It's the weirdest, creepiest smile. I know. I don't, and just everything is just. Yeah. Super neat, man. <laughs> Super neat. Yes, that's what he says. Went to went to the um, gym and he went in jeans and um, yeah, it was just yeah yeah. I had to stop watching. The train wreck was just more than I could take. <laughs> well, you know how they fell in love. Did they meet in homeschool something or other? Well, they fell in love the old fashioned way through letters. They were exchanging letters and occasional phone calls around December of 2016. In fact, they were living in different states and said that because they were living in different states, getting to know each other was very difficult because they had different schedules going on and that kind of thing. So love letters was the way that they fell in love. Well, I could, I could see Smiley Boy, large families. the Smiley guy, uh, writing a good love letter. Yeah. Typically, these large families um, are homeschooled and they go to homeschool conferences and so they find each other once at a homeschool conference, and then that's how they start courting each other or getting to know each other over a long period of time. I don't know if Welcome to Plathville is going to come back or not. They have 
they only did six or seven episodes in that first season. But if they come back, I'll certainly be watching. Yeah, I made it to like three. So what happened at the end of season one, by the way, is Mariah is going to Minnesota for an undetermined amount of time um, to spend time with a grandparent or something. That was a huge decision she had to make at the end of the, hmm. the season. That was like their cliffhanger. And you know reality shows might not be off to the best uh, ending to get a season renewal when that's the cliffhanger. Yeah. Anyway, one movie I did see last night I wanted to talk to you about was called Invisible Man. You said you wouldn't go see it. No, it sounds scary as heck. It's not. It's really, it's actually really good. The premise of the movie is that this man has found a way to become invisible. And he was a wife abuser. And the wife was running away from him. In the very opening scene of the movie, she's running away from him. And you don't even know why. But he abuses her. And so she decides to, you know, run away. And he fakes his own death so that he can torture her by being invisible and make everybody think that she's crazy. And in order to get the money, she has to pass a psych eval, which is very difficult when an invisible person keeps messing with you. Huh. It was amazing. It was very well done. It, I mean, because a lot of the movies that we go see, they're not that good. This one kept you on the edge of your seat the whole time. Highly recommend it. It's called The Invisible Man. Yeah, I don't want the bejeebies scared out of me. You know, it's only got a couple jump scares. Otherwise, it's just, how is she going to do this? How you know? How is she going to convince everybody she's not crazy? Okay, off the air, you're going to tell me that I don't have to see it. <laughs> no, you've got to go see it. <laughs> no, thank you. Oh, man. I live my nice sheltered life where MASH is pretty much the center of my universe. <laughs> Wow, a show that was on 30 years ago. Careful. Hmm. Anyway, do you have anything else this week that you want to bring up? I don't think so. Here in Wisconsin, it's still quite cold. We want it to you be don't warmer. Know that. Yes, I do. Maybe it's awesome now. Yeah, I don't think so. All right, well, let's wrap it up for this week. We're going to come back next week with a celebrity guest. We yes. can promise you that. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing who that will be. Yeah. And uh, if you have a suggestion... You can always email us at hello at fancounters.com. And like I told you on a different episode, if you have somebody that you want to have on the show, email us and we will get them on and we'll get your questions answered. We might bring your voice on the show. Maybe we'll call you and you can be live with the guest. You know, we're just looking for ideas here. Just let us know. Okay. We will see you next week. Make sure to subscribe to Fan Counters. Give us a five-star review. And Elizabeth is falling asleep. No, I was just about to say, give us a five star review, and you took my line. I only have like three, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye. Bye bye.